Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you a popular version of Balfe's immortal opera, The Bohemian Girl, starring Gordon MacRae and his celebrated guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another thrilling musical drama is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marlon Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I shall be Thaddeus, and Dorothy Kirsten is Arlene, in our Railroad Hour impression of the Bohemian Girl. The wind that blows through the pine tops of the Austrian forests also fans the campfires of the wandering gypsies. There are no marble halls in the mountain wilds, and only the boughs of the forest make a roof over our heads. But a man or a woman can be happy serving in the band of the Gypsy King. In a gypsy's life you read The life that all would like to lead In a gypsy's life you read The life that all would like of everything lovely in the world. And I don't even have to close my eyes. Sometimes this gypsy life we lead seems to be a vision. And the dream I have over and over again and again, my dream seems to be reality. What have you dreamt, my love? Tell me. I dreamt that I dwelt in marble halls With vassals
My love is as deep as deepness, bright as brilliance, eternal as eternity. Yet, there is a mystery which mars our happiness. Who am I? Where did I come from? Am I worthy of you? Oh, my love, I... This mark on my arm, I have seen you looking at it many times. And on your face, there is a touch of memory, a distant pain. Tell me, Thaddeus, help me solve this mystery. I will tell you. The wound upon my arm Whose mark through life will be In saving me from greater harm Was there transfixed by me My sixth son had its radiant shed. Oh, I feel who had lain at bay, pursued by hunters, crossed the way. By slaying him, I rescued thee. And in his death rose agony. Thy gentle form, by his antler gold. This humble arm to thy home restored. Strange feelings move his breast. It never knew before. And bid me hear, hear all that you reveal, that you reveal. Secret of her birth to me is only known. The secret of a life whose worth I prize beyond mine own, beyond mine own. king of this gypsy tribe, I order you both to join in the village of Arnheim. But he was going to tell me. My child, it is sometimes better not to know too much. The village fair is to start, and they expect us to dance and sing for them. My love. Come, take my hand. You have long been betrothed according to the customs of the gypsies. Why not make this fair day your wedding day? I will not force Arlene until she is satisfied in her mind. I owe you my life. And long ago I gave you my love. Take my hand. Or do you not wish a gypsy bride? Harleen. Come, gypsy bride, and repair to the fair. Fair or maize is done, will the hours entrance. Come, gypsy bride, and repair to the fair. 
child who dances so exuberantly. That, Your Excellency, is our bride. Within the hour, she will be married. Bring her here. I should like to wish her happiness. Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Arlene, go speak with the Count, but only for a moment, I pray you. We do not wish to delay the wedding ceremony. Of course. Your Excellency. My child, I wish you much joy in your lifetime. Long ago, I had a daughter... But now the marble halls of my castle are empty, and I am a lonely old man. What happened to her, sir? Stolen from her room many years ago. She was only a child of six. Sire. Someday, perhaps, I shall find her. Ah, but do not let me spoil the happiness of your wedding day. Sire, tell me, would you know your daughter if you saw her again? Only by a mark. A mark? On her arm. Was it a mark like this? What? My child. My daughter. Father, it is the man who saved my life many years ago who is to become my husband today. Thaddeus. Where has he gone? Thaddeus! Do not leave me, my child, on the day of our reunion. I must find Thaddeus! Thaddeus! Oh, Thaddeus, where are you going? Into the forest, where gypsies live. You must go where you belong, Ali. To the marble halls you dreamt about. I, I, I cannot go with you. No? But I only ask and hope that you will think of me and remember. Please be. Well, our lips and other hearts, their tales of love shall tell. In language whose excess imparts the part they feel so well. Such a scene, some recollection of me. Of days that have as happy been, and you remember me.
Goodbye, my love. Thaddeus. Turn for the second act of The Bohemian Girl in just a moment. If you were asked what it is that makes possible the world's highest standard of living here in the United States, you would find it pretty difficult to single out any one thing that contributes more than any other to the production and distribution of America's vast wealth of goods. For really, it takes a combination of our rich natural resources, our unparalleled agricultural production and industrial capacity, and the freedom of enterprise of our people to turn out all the things we need and use in our daily lives and must have for our defense. And essential to this combination is our continent-wide mass transportation system, whose backbone is the nation's railroads. Day in and day out in all seasons and in all parts of the country, trains are ever rolling, carrying raw materials and finished goods, the products of farm, forest, and mine, of mill and factory. These trains are doing the nation's big transportation job, supplying the basic service that this big country must have. For our railroads produce more intercity freight transportation service than all other forms of transportation combined. And only railroads can do a job like this and do it with an overall economy in the use of fuel, materials, and manpower, which no other form of transportation offering general services even approaches. Without this basic all-commodity and low-cost moving job being done by railroads, We could not produce and live as we do. That's why it's so important to all of us that these essential railroads be allowed to keep themselves strong, ready to go on meeting the big needs of our big commerce and the growing demands of national defense. To be able to do this, railroads must be permitted to charge freight rates, which will produce revenues adequate to meet their cost of operation and yield earnings that will attract the capital investment necessary to continue their large-scale program of improving their service for the nation and for you. And now act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of The Bohemian Girl, starring Gordon McRae as Thaddeus and Dorothy Kirsten as Arlene. How empty the forest is. Go to her. Claim her. I cannot. I am her father's enemy. Listen. Everywhere I turn, I I hear her voice. Oh, my boy, you are listening to the wind and the trees and the sound of your own heart. No, Dennis. Listen. There. Again. It is only the wind and the sound of of memory. Oh, it's all. 
I will never see her again. How many years have we been friends, Thaddeus? Since you escaped from your pursuers, the soldiers of Austria. Yes, and you gave me refuge here in your green forest. I shall not stand by and see you hurt again. When you saved that child from death and her father was not grateful, I stole her from her room. Say the word and I shall steal her again. Oh, my friend, Arlene is no longer a child. She's a woman now. Their home is within the marble halls of Arnhem Castle. Then go to the castle. Stand before them and fly your banners in the face of your enemy. I will do it, Devilsoff. For what good is it to live if you die each minute? I shall go to Arnhem Castle. <laughs> serious, Gypsy. The daughter of a count cannot marry a forest vagabond. Father! It's better to die as my comrades on the field of battle have died than to stand before you hearing such words. Call on your soldiers. They will wish to capture me, to kill me when I tell you who I am. When the fair land of Poland was plowed by the hoof of the ruthless invader when my with steel to the bosom and flame to the roof completed her triumphal right in that moment of danger when freedom invoked all the fearless sons of her pride in a phalanx as dauntless as freedom may yoked I fought and I fled by her side my birth is noble on stage, my crest, as is thine own. Let this attest, my birth is noble on stage, my crest, as is thine own. As is thine own, let this attack. Here are my papers. I am a captain in the army of Poland. Oh. Uh, just uh, your arm, Captain Arnheim. The enemy of Austria. But in the forests of the gypsies, your daughter and I were not enemies. My boy, in your gypsy camp, you have not heard the news from the battlefield. The war is over. We are now at peace, your country and mine. Today, the fair land of Austria clasps the hand of the fair land of Poland. Thaddeus. I give you my blessing and the belated thanks of an old man who thought he had lost a daughter, but who has gained a son. Arlene. Oh, my love, it seems as if a great storm has been raging about us. And now, look, suddenly the sun shines and the whole world is beautiful. And you're in my arms. bride with the costume of the gypsy and the trees of the forest as my wedding canopy. Very well, my child. Oh, Arlene, we shall be always together. In marble halls and green forests. Do you remember your dream, my love? It is very easy to remember a dream, especially when it comes true. I dream that you Pledge their faith to me. When I drive the 
Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Herb Butterfield, who was the Count, to Bill Conrad, who was Devil's Hoof, and to our entire company. Bob's Bohemian Girl was prepared for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Only railroads can produce the mass transportation this nation must have to live as it does and defend itself. For this reason... Our railroads must be kept healthy and strong at all times. And this can be accomplished only if they are allowed to earn adequate revenues. And revenues will not be adequate unless the railroads are permitted to charge freight rates which are in keeping with today's levels of wages, taxes, and prices. And now here again is our lovely guest star, Miss Dorothy Kirsten. It was a real joy singing with you tonight, Gordon. Well, Dorothy, we ought to do it again sometime, like uh, maybe next week. All right, Gordy. What shall we sing about? More marble halls, Dottie, but very different music. Uh-huh. You're going to be a princess, and I'm going to be your brother, the prince, in Cole Porter's delightful jubilee. I can hardly wait to begin the beginning. Man, not only that, we're going to take a trip to the moon on gossamer wings. That sounds like a fabulous night. <laughs> See you next week, Gordy. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night and Cole Porter's Jubilee, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> The Bohemian Girl was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Proceeding was transcribed. Next, it's...